Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achurno and welcome to my Game Engine series. Oh, it feels so good to say that. This series has been in the making for like two years and we're finally beginning. And today, suitably, I think we're going to be talking about what a Game Engine actually is. Because before we start making one, it's probably a good, a good idea to actually define what we're going to be making. Um, and over the next kind of few videos, we are going to start planning this Game Engine specifically. So definitely check out those later videos. They will come out very, very soon. Um, but first of all, before I begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of the patrons who made this series happen. Patreon.com forward slash the Cherno is my Patreon. If you guys want to support me, then that would be absolutely amazing because that is what makes this possible and your continued support is very, very important to me. So a huge thank you to everyone because I wouldn't be here without you. So it's just so amazing that I can do this because I've wanted to do this for so long and you've given me the opportunity and the time to actually do this. Okay, so anyway. In this first kind of set of planning videos, as I want to say, we're going to be basically just talking about what a game engine actually is. So, game engines, right? They've been around for a while. What are they? Why do we need them? Do we even need them? And what is it that we're actually going to be making in this series? So, people have very, very broad definitions of game engines, ranging from everything from like, oh, it's just something that helps you kind of build games quickly to like full kind of like suite of like tools that content creators can use to make models and everything like that. And I mean, if you kind of just go on the internet and search for a minute, like what a game engine actually is and what examples of game engines are, you'll probably stumble upon engines such as Unity or Unreal, right? And those engines are examples of game engines that have been kind of commercialized and kind of, I guess, released out into the public either for free or kind of on subscription plans or on kind of some kind of royalty agreement, right? Um, and they kind of present themselves essentially as a set of tools, like a one big tool usually, like a level editor pretty much, in which you can actually build your game. It's like a kind of platform pretty much for building an interactive kind of application. It doesn't even have to necessarily be a game. It's just really at its core an interactive application. Now, those are the ones that you kind of see that are out in the wild, right? Because they've been kind of commercialized and publicized, I guess, as specifically as game engines. That is the product. The product is the game engine. But for a lot of companies, it's not even about, you know, making a game engine. That's not their product. Their product is a game. And so we look at all of these video game companies like EA, Ubisoft, you know, whatever, Activision, Blizzard, Valve, they have their own in-house engines that they've built that never see the light of day as an actual game engine. They're not released as a game engine. No one has access to them outside of the company as a game engine. They're all internal, right? But what they do provide is a platform for the staff working on those game teams to actually construct that game, to actually build that game. So when we think about a game engine, what I really want to kind of push forward is the idea of it's a platform which you can use to build video games. And the term game, again, is something that I keep coming back to because hypothetically, you know, realistically speaking, it doesn't have to be a game. Now, these game studios, their products are games. So they do build games with these engines. But if you look at something like Unreal or Unity, they can be used for much more than just games. They can be used for building VR applications, like architectural visualizations, even in some cases simulations, which again, obviously would require a lot of additional code, but they could just be used as a way to kind of build an application, kind of rendering lifecycle type, type real-time application thing, right? Essentially what I'm saying is, if you want an application that displays graphics in real time, you could just use Unity or Unreal to visualize whatever data you have, right? And on top of that, it's not just even about visualization, it's also about interaction on a number of platforms, even VR, right? It's a whole kind of platform for you to actually kind of convert the data that you have into a more interactable kind of, or I guess interactive uh, visual format. And that's where my definition of game engines kind of comes in. And I want you to just think about for a minute what it is we're building um, and what a game engine actually is at its core, right? Let's simplify this whole thing. Let's take it down a notch and actually think about, well, okay, good. It's a platform to build games, but what is it really? It comes down to this and before I continue. Coffee. Where would we be without coffee? 
Anyway, where was it? Game engines, yes. So, what is a game engine at its core? Well, basically what it is, is a, or, or at least its goal is to transform data from one format into another. That's what this is all about, data transformation, right? We essentially read in a set of files from disk. We take the data from those files and we transform it into something else that shows up on our screens. Okay, that's it. And furthermore, we almost always provide a way to interact with that data as well. But that's really all a game engine is. And that's what we're gonna be building. Something that reads data in and transforms it into something that we see on our screens. Now, because of the way I phrased that, it's important to realize that at its core, that's really what a game engine is. It's not a hard-coded kind of programmed application that just does certain things, right? If you're building that, you're probably most likely actually just building an application or a framework for an application like that. What we're building is something that reads files in, transforms them, and then puts them on the screen and adds, you know, interactive capabilities to that as well. That's what we're building. And that's really as simple as it is. So because of that, it's important to realize the game engines are extremely data oriented, meaning that the purpose of a game engine is not to kind of create data based on nothing, right? We're not doing that at any point, at, like ever, right? What we're doing is we're just loading existing files. Now, let's focus on the files for a second. Where are these files coming from? What are they? How do we make them? That is also part of what a game engine is. It's a platform to make those files. Now we call these files assets. An asset is just something, a file, that the game engine actually takes in as input. Now I did say a file, it doesn't have to be a physical file, but essentially it's just a bunch of data. It could be a virtual file, or it could be something that the game engine creates while running, right? That is based on some other asset. Like an asset could, t could tell the game engine to create another asset, for example, on the fly. That would also be an asset, even though it's not a physical file. But what I'm saying is, a game engine typically includes a platform, a suite of tools that can create these assets, right? It creates a way for us to actually author assets. Now, what I mean by that is, picture someone building a level for a game, or maybe building a 3D model or a texture or something like that. An artist or a content creator will actually go in, in a game studio structure, a content creator will use game engine tools, right? To actually author those assets. Now they might make a texture in Photoshop or they might make a, make a 3D model in like 3D Studio Max or Maya or something like that, right? Or Blender, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, they still need to get that model, that 3D model into a format that the game engine can actually receive. Because for like kind of real serious kind of big game engines, it's pretty much never happens that they just take in like, you know, JPEG or PNG images or like just kind of OBJ models or something like that. That doesn't happen, right? Usually they get built into a format that's custom designed for that specific game engine whether that be textures, models, levels, whatever. So typically speaking, that content creator would also be responsible for kind of, you know, turning that kind of model in that third party format into the game engine format and thus kind of defining everything that needs to exist for that game engine to actually do something with that model, right? Because typically speaking, game engines probably have more than just the data that's included in a model that's exported from like Maya. They might have additional information such as where to place it in the world, what kind of other components it might have on it, what functionality it might have on it, right? All that kind of stuff. So that is essentially what a content creator does, creates content for the game engine. So in other words, content creators are responsible for authoring assets for the game engine. And then the game engine reads those assets at runtime and essentially presents something on the screen and presents a way for the user to interact with that. And that is what a game is, okay? So we can break down all the systems of a game engine. There are very, very, very many systems of a game engine. Depends on the engine, obviously. Um, but I'm not even, I'm thinking that maybe probably wouldn't even be um, uh, wise to kind of cover that now. We might just do that in the next episode because in the next episode, we're gonna kind of go through all the different systems of a game engine and talk about how we're going to design and actually implement them. Um, but essentially, 
in order to facilitate this kind of data transformation that we have, we need a number of various systems, right? Including like platform abstraction layers, if we want our, our engine or this data transformation to happen on a variety of platforms, whether that be, you know, desktop based platforms like Windows, Mac, Linux, or like mobile platforms like Android, iOS, or console platforms like Xbox, PlayStation, you know, Nintendo, whatever, right? We need platform abstraction layers so that our code can kind of run on different platforms. And the point of a platform abstraction layer, of course, is to take, is to abstract those platform specific, the platform details away from us so that we can just write code that is generalized for all platforms. And then there's many other, I'm not even gonna get into everything that game engines have. You know, we have rendering, we have kind of audio, we have like file input output, we have serialization, we have just so many different things, right? Um, that facilitate this kind of data transformation. Uh, and again, writing them is gonna be <laughs> quite an adventure. So I'm really excited for this entire series. Um, but apart from that kind of runtime, which takes that data, transforms it and puts it on the screen, as I said, and adds interaction to it. Apart from that, you know, we also have the actual tools that people use to author that data initially. Like a level editor, for example, is probably, um, I, I think the, the simplest example that most of you have probably heard about or are used to. You know, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> that's also part of a game engine because without that, I mean, you're probably going to be stuck actually writing out your levels manually in like C++ code or something like that, which obviously isn't going to be very, very useful for anyone. Um, so game engines are really this huge kind of topic. They're these amazing kind of engines really that take data, transform them, but also provide a way to actually author that data. And that's what this series is going to be about. This is the first episode, first official episode of the Game Engine series in which we're going to, I'm going to, along with you guys, it's going to be a lot of community interaction, a lot of community support as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a Game Engine from scratch in C++ and in any, in any other languages that we decide we need to use as well. Like C Sharp, for example, is a common one. Um, and this journey is going to take a really long time. It's going to be really in depth. I'm going to treat this as a tutorial series not like as a kind of watch me write a game engine with minimal explanation. I'm actually gonna teach this as a course pretty much. Um, and we're just gonna build this huge kind of system, right? And one of the reasons the game engines exist as well, remember, is that games nowadays have become so complicated that if we were to not have that platform to build games upon, we would end up building everything from scratch every time. Think about a team of 200 people making a game like, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto or something like that, right? Just an example off the top of my head. That's probably way more than 200 people, probably more like a thousand, but anyway, right? Picture them trying to reiterate, kind of, kind of build the same technology over and over again. Like that's impossible. And furthermore, engineers like programmers, right? Can't be available for everything that is needed to make a game like that, right? Which is why engineers end up building all of these tools that content creators or artists that aren't familiar with programming or engineering can actually use to build all the content. Because as I just mentioned, game engines convert, they, they transform that data, those assets into something that you see on the screen. Where do those assets come from, right? Content creators. So really when you think about it, what is a game? Well, is a game about programming? Is a game about writing code and doing all that? Well, not really right? Big scale professional games aren't about that at all. They're about taking data and putting it on the screen. So that's really all a game engine is doing. And that's kind of the point of it. The point of it is to say, okay, enough programming, enough writing code to do everything, right? All we're going to do is design some kind of way for people who aren't familiar with programming to actually create all that data, to author all that data. Of course, there will need to be stuff like scripting, but not direct programming, right? That's kind of the idea of a game engine. And of course I am being kind of general in that case. There is a lot of actual engineering support required for games, but in the ideal case, look at something like Unity. You can make pretty much any kind of non huge scale game with very minimal scripting, right? Because the bulk of the work is just creating systems that can take that data and put and position them on the screen at the right time and also kind of queue up different events that might happen and also add that kind of interaction with the user. 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. You'll get many rewards such as access to source code early, access to videos about a week early as well. So all these videos will be up a week early. So if you want to watch the second video, it's actually already up on Patreon. So you can just watch that right now. Um, but also we have like monthly hangouts on, on Discord and there's private Discord channels and there's just so many rewards that you guys get for helping support this series because it's really important uh, to me that we kind of build this as a community and your support is very important to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Next time we're going to talk about all the systems that we're going to kind of put into our game engine. And then after we kind of get over that initial planning and design stage, which I do want to keep very brief because we'll kind of, you know, we're going to design the whole thing and then only then start programming. We're going to kind of design as we go, but we still have to kind of define the scope of this so that we can start in the right place and not end up rewriting code a billion times. So next time we're going to kind of plan everything and then up to that, we're going to finally create that new project from scratch um, and get on with this. And I'll, I'll cover kind of setting up the environment that you need for this and all of that stuff as well. So don't worry, this is going to be kind of step by step from scratch every episode. I can't wait. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.